Hello, art friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Again, we want to thank our patrons for your support. As always, we couldn't do it without you guys. We did a video over yesterday, Patreon exclusive in the morning, just basically saying uh, depopulation is just the beginning. It's what happens after that point that is going to lay the groundwork for what manifests farther on down the line. At least that has been the case in typical cycles. As this is not the first time, not the second time, this has happened Oof, I don't know how many times. <laughs> Can you count that high? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's so much more to the picture, too. It's it's so muddy and convoluted. Ah, but there's so much going on, and it's really uh, such an exciting time to be alive. We were talking about a great topic to go into. What does it mean to be a bron in a Bronze Age? The darkness is starting to be removed from our eyes. That's exciting. Or is it just kind of terrifying to some? Well, you know, everybody, I think, has their own opinion on it. Well, again, I think it depends on how awake you are. And I really do think that for those that are awake, it's going to be just fine. You're going to be just fine. Now, those that have been sound asleep... Uh, it could be earth shattering, gr just groundbreaking, uh, it paradigm exploding. And, and yes, I mean, we, we did have Orson Welles and his War of the Worlds uh, just for entertainment. And people were jumping off of bridges and going to go jump off of buildings because they thought it was real. Uh, but it wasn't. It was just an elaborate ruse. It was just a show. As you see, the sun is still uh, doing its dance. So we had that X uh, 8.7, 8.8, and now we have another uh, X class. You know, that, <laughs> that one uh, grouping, 3664, is still plugging away. Look at this. You know, now it's, it's turning away from us. It'll be back around the 30th of May, or the first week in June. That's going to roll around and, and, and take a look at us again. That might be the time when we get some serious disruptions, the first couple weeks of June. And again, uh, the timing. Have we shifted? Have we shifted timelines? I think timeline shifting is something uh, that is maybe getting into the populace's minds a little bit more these days it's a tug of war of consciousness that's going on right now now 3664 is rolling away but look at all these these are staring us right in the face and they are developing we are truly going into a, or at solar maximum so you know hang on tight uh, it's it's going to be a fun ride and as long as we can look at it in that in that way and what the bloody hell is this Oh, this is full of all kinds of fun stuff. Oh, <clears throat> talk about ego. It, it just shows you where the world's mindset is. You know, here you have King Charles now exposing a picture of himself. Lifelike? <laughs> well, you know, it certainly is large. And what are they hiding in there? This is, as far as I can see, one of the biggest topics right now on uh, Twitter. Everybody is, is looking at this, and again, it's the apocalypse, so it, it's the big reveal, because after all, that is the definition, or one of the definitions. And this person uh, says, hey, my gut's telling me this has something to do with that. That? Yeah. It very well could be. Everything is ritual. And why is everything ritual? Well, in, in magic circles, and again, magic is all about getting your will to control reality in the way that you want it to be manifest. And the reality is, as we look at our subatomic world, <laughs> uh, okay, I got another video we'll have to do uh, to bring up. 
again, it's amazing what you find in, in the ancient Hindu texts because they had far more knowledge than the vast majority of humans even have a clue of at this point in time. Um, yeah, they, they are very, very well uh, aware that the use of rituals can help to focus intention and gather intention from a collective, whether they know it or not, in order to bring about a particular outcome. Nothing is ever done uh, without there being a, a bigger purpose going on. There's a purpose to this painting, and it's not just to inflate his ego. No, I mean, there's there's so much in there. You know, I call it will bending. And to me, they they do their will bending for their benefit and not for the benefit of others. Um, I, I think there's a line drawn there. If you if you take life to get your will uh, put into action, I think that's very, very bad. We all have this ability to strengthen our energy and create from what appears to be nothing into something that we desire, that we want. We are master manifestors. We all have this ability. However, they have very powerful bloodlines that they keep pretty pristine, as pristine as possible without, you know, really messing up the, the human vessel too, too much. But they do. They keep these blood, these bloodlines, because these beings are very, they, they work a lot with their pineal gland. They work a lot through mental telepathy. They work a lot through their rituals. And, and they work together, too. So that's the thing. They get all of these um, people who have these abilities and are in the bloodlines. They get them together and they do these rituals, these very sick, disturbing rituals and the, <laughs> and to to get what they want to get their castles you know to get to get their money power is what they want you know it's not even so much as 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 the physical things as it is they want control and power no and and that's a big reveal because again when you look to the talmud and you look to the root of the abrahamic traditions the Torah, <clears throat> what do you see? It's about here. It's about now. It's not about life after death. It's not about promises of, you know, et eternal life and this and that, heaven. No, no, no. It's about here and now. And it's been used to create uh, two huge, gigantic religions that, really control the minds of two-thirds of humanity, or at least the lens that is viewed. This, and, and think about the lens, too, and the eye, right? There's a quote, Let thine eye be filled with light, and the whole body will be filled with light. And we're talking about the pineal gland. And, of course, we, we, we know uh, that there's the all-seeing eye, in the pyramid, we, I mean, that's on our, our dollar bills. It's right in our face. Everything is right in our face. It's always been right in our face. And the uh, satanic lies and illusions are there for those that can see. So, one, the color. Color is very, very striking. You know, again, why uh, is it an illusion to blood red? Well, blood's a little darker than that. Um, is it an allusion to frequencies and magenta is a very high frequency or are they trying to give the illusion that they're high frequency? What else is going on? You know, I've seen this done uh, numerous times in, in various uh, paintings and pictures and when you mirror something, sometimes you get other things sticking out. Right here, I mean, I, I can see right here uh, like a lion type of face right here. And ultimately, you know, when you look to a lot of the mythos, when you talk about the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah, et cetera, et cetera, you know, there's there's different layers to different things. And, and Lyra and lion, you know, going back to the Lyra and Draco wars and the fact that, you know, so many um, beings took part in this in these wars again the the hindu books will tell you there's hundreds of thousands of humanoid species in our galaxy uh it just just here in in our own home turf which which is again very very vast 
and yet you have the psyops that that want to make you think that you're <laughs> here on on earth and there's nothing else but earth and earth is is all that there is no earth's just a tiny little point in this big war and cindy sees i see the owl too whoa that just woke up there it is the owl of bohemian grove there's all this symbolism obviously this face staring us right in the middle here too and um yeah, wasn't there something with a butterfly? I'm trying to think. There was some other painting or something that looked like a butterfly. Uh, yeah, there's the owl staring back at us over here down low, too. It's, it's again, in multiple places. But, yeah, we were pointing out the butterfly on the shoulder. Um, you know, you could start to see there's faces in here like crazy. This, this, this looks like a, a, a feline in anguish. Uh, a feline humanoid again you, this is why tarot is so powerful too because we can see in it now this looks like merlin the magician over here with a pointy hat his arms are out he's behind uh the owl the owl's right there i mean we could go on and on <clears throat> so you know can you see uh this person's looking at one thing in particular yeah we could see that and we could see a lot lot more and then we reverse it, and then you uh, see clearly what looks to be very uh, Baphomet-like horns. And there you see very much a, a goat head, like the goat of Mendes. And, you know, there's so many different layers and levels to this. It, it's just really, really wild um one of the things that we we don't make a lot of videos on but one of the things that i've studied extensively since childhood is all facets of magic um all you know all different types uh, never delve down the dark side because that's not in my my soul uh, you know in fact completely the opposite of that <clears throat> but at the same time, I have read about that. And I think when you look to the works of like Anton LaVey, it's just, you know, there's nothing there. That that That's a ruse. That's a cover. Uh, that's the type of thing to get people looking away from where the real black magic is being done, which unfortunately often is right in the churches. <clears throat> it's right in, uh, you know, the mansions the, of the kings and the queens and the temples and you know, it, it's it's in the hidden places, and it's often the ones that portray themselves as, you know, saints and teachers and leaders that are truly the ones that are uh, the ones that we really have to be aware of, the ones that are not trying to portray themselves as the, the incarnation of darkness itself. No, it's the ones coming as angels of light. Absolutely. You know, you look at this, and I know one thing I'm going to do after this video is I'm saging. <laughs> I'm, I'm saging. I'm going to sage. I'm going to do my mantras, my meditation. I'm going to clean myself up. I'm going to shower <laughs> shower with the, the clear, etheric energy. Because I can tell you guys, this has a lot of, there's like spells inside of it. And you really do want to wipe that stuff clean. If, you're, if you find yourself being exposed to any of that, literally shower, literally bath, that's always better. But if you you can't you know saging bare minimum but this is really powerful stuff and this is what they use to control so the 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 energies that we're up against is not just that in the 3d it's not we are up against energies that we cannot see and we've been groomed to such a high degree to only know only only see what's in front of you and only outline what's in front of you and policies and procedures you can only do you can only put science in this little bitty box and you can't look outside of that realm there's so many other realms out there and you know what they are very privy to all of it their education and our education two totally different things two completely different worlds we are only educated to serve them to serve them and then if you're if you don't put your child in school to get indoctrinated you can go to jail so you know it's really serious business uh, they're wanting to keep control. Yeah, you know, there's there's so much here. <clears throat> it's just a never ending uh, man. I mean, you know, there's there's like a face here. It, there's there's kind of like a, a demonic looking gray right, right there. Yeah. 
There's um, another that looks kind of um, like a baby ET hybrid with a crown on there. Um, there's there's more uh, owls everywhere, other demonic faces. Uh, there is so much in here. Here is another portrait of somebody. It looks like a past king uh, or queen. I think maybe feminine queen, possibly. Um, of course, with this lineage, it's hard to tell. Um, you know, there's so much in there. It, it's just loaded. Like Cindy said, this is a spell. This is so freaking dark and demonic. It's again, how could we possibly, how could anybody in your right mind have any sort of good feelings looking at any of the royal family? Again, Baphomet ultimately is AI. It's an AI program. Um, <clears throat> and here you see uh, the Ida Pingala Shashumna. This is what we've talked about so many times too. It stops at the solar plexus. That's not the natural order. This should go all the way through. It should blossom into uh, a halo around the, you know, above the crown chakra. But what they're saying here is uh, they're only interested in this world. They're only interested in the little I. They're only interested in the ego and everything that is self-serving because, again, it stops right at the solar plexus. The I am center. I am that I said I am. Yeah, and there you have goat hoofs again. Uh, androgynous. And, you know, this uh, is a being that every single one of our little ones that goes down a path of not being um, as is the norm with, uh, you know, becoming a good little boy or a good little girl growing up to become a good, you know, strong, solid man uh, or a wonderful, wise woman. Every every person that doesn't go the natural way is is in some ways a sacrifice to this being, this this program again. It's a dark matrix within a matrix. This is all basically part of their paradigm. And, you know, it doesn't get any darker and more evil than, than royalty. And this is where, you know, it, it's kind of mind-boggling the spell that people are under, the God spell, that they can't see that, you know, the B-I-B-L-E was handed to them by royalty. It was handed to them by royalty. Hello. I mean, how how much how much smelling salts do we have out there? I I don't know. Not enough. Not enough. You know, everything is right in our faces. Baphomet. Well, you know, this goes all the way back um, again to the Templars. Goes back even before. Um, but as far as like what we know and what is shared openly. Um, again, it, it's it's a very androgynous being, and what gender again is AI? AI is not a, a, a gender. It's not engendered, you know. So it's not you know um, part of the normal order of things, and you know this is something that was obscure, reborn 19th century occult works, uh, thanks especially to. Eliphas Levy, uh, in the mid-1850s, he published a picture of Baphomet in his book, Dogmas and Rituals of High Magic, which I had a copy of, actually I had a very extensive library uh, at one point in time, and, and it's getting better again, uh, as so many things go out of print and then you can't get them, or you get a new, updated, revised version that is missing some key stuff because the the control system found out, uh oh we gave too much away there. Yeah, the sabbatic goat. Ah, uh, yes, in the devil. You know, th this, this again is something that there's the knowledge of and then it goes deeper, then it goes deeper, then it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And there are beings that in their rituals they do um, call up. They do call up. The jinn are very, very real. And then yet, what do we see when we see a depiction of, of Moses in the burning bush? It sounds an awful lot like a jinn, you know? <laughs> you know, the problem is that People are too indoctrinated and they're terrified. It's done out of fear. 
because they even curse you with, you know, you better not add anything to or take anything away or you're going to burn forever. And um, one of our dear family members, I think it might have been Jane, uh, was uh, saying, oh, I'm glad I caught the um, the video done uh, by Paul uh, the fifth kind uh he's really really a good good source of uncovering along with Mauro Bellino um and others you know Billy Carson's been been going at it forever too there's so many people that have gone on to expose the system but the whole thing about hellfire coming from Gehenna which again where did that come from well it's where everybody burned their garbage I mean I knew this as a kid um and it, it's literally a distortion. And uh, as Buddha had said, the only place where hell exists is in the minds of the believers. Because everything is ultimately mind. It's all mind. It's all consciousness. So we need to be very, very careful of our frequencies. Uh, yet again, you will have people saying, well, then we need to just, you know, focus on, on, on the good. And it is a delicate balance because we want to focus on the good. But did that stop the, you know, the atrocities of World War II? Is it stopping the atrocities uh, that are going on in Gaza right now if, if we just ignore them? Ignoring things might work for the individual if we steer clear and stay out of the way of all the chaos. But it doesn't help the collective. And I do think that starseed light workers, the ones that we call starseed light workers, for the most part, you're here to anchor light. Now, it could be that you're just supposed to be in a in an area, a neighborhood, a, a particular place to anchor light there and just your your presence doing your thing and and making sure you're being the best version of you. Maybe all that's required for you to anchor your light in that particular area. For other people, it's going to be waking them up to what all this really means and how, you know, yes, uh, they portray the good as evil and the evil as good. And until we get a certain amount of those people to understand it, you're not going to shift the paradigm. So, you know, are, are you looking to help the planet or are you looking to help yourself? Again, each person has... Uh, their own particular unique mission in this world, in this life. And, you know, your mission uh, this time may be very different than what it was in the last life, as, as mine couldn't be any more different, you know, having the memory of, of the last life, which was a blessing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know it's it's so easy to just simply ignore and just just pretend like nothing is going on but then if we all do that and we all do not share information you have a lot of people who are just gonna blindly go to the store and buy whatever is on the shelves and fill their bodies full of poison because that's exactly what it is and they 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 make sure that we have enough food out there enough sugar enough chemicals pumping into our bodies that they can keep us under control. So, I mean, in that sense, no, I'm not for just pretending it's okay because it's not. It, it's just not. I, I think there's been enough pretending for long enough. There's been enough secrets. And now is a time where secrets are supposed to come out so people can make informed decisions. Then at least understand and know the chemicals that they're putting in your body and they're and they're putting happy faces and, and really great commercials and wonderful jingles saying buy this product at least people know that there's something really nasty that could make them very sick in there and it might not make you sick in one day but believe me if you continue to eat this stuff that's on the shelves it's going to come back to get you the human body can only be so resilient it can only handle so much and it's a miraculous machine it really is the human body is really amazing i've known that all of my life there is so much to know about the human body and one of the things is if you can keep it clean and pristine which they've made impossible at this point if you can keep it clean and the food and the water going in you can live a very long time and your cells can regenerate your body can regenerate your mind your soul can regenerate um but they don't want that they just want these short little lives where people can work a job a usually a single job make 
you know, money for them and keep their businesses and everything going, keep them in power and then, and then just die. <laughs> That's really all they want. I just, I, I find it to be cold and I can't sit back and pretend that that's not happening. Mm -mm. Yeah. So here you have on February 23rd, 1744, Mayor, Mayor Amschel Bauer, a Jewish uh, Khazar, is born in Frankfurt, Germany, son of Moses Amschel Bauer money lender and proprietor of a counting house put a red sign uh, up above the entrance door to the counting house the sign is a red hexagram that geometrically and numerically this person is saying translates into the number 666 you know again the the red shields they are a shield so to speak and, and they are meant to take attention um, away from those that are meant to always stay in the dark um, for for a purposes beyond what the public understands as again the ones that have been truly uh running the planet on the planet if you were to see them you would you would know there's a, a little something different going on there uh so we have the human controllers that again control through the banking system primarily uh everything is that's been given to you in in the bible again is is meant for human consumption it's meant to be implanted it's meant to distort so when you see things you automatically will say oh okay so that that's supposed to mean 666 so it's got to be anti-christ etc etc but when you look to uh, the hexagram and magic it is it exudes power over planetary spheres so what this is also kind of doing is is they're again trying to impose their imprint on the natural system with the unnatural the ai system ultimately um and just like when we say well <laughs> what gender is ai well that's silly you know a's not it's not engendered no it's it, it's not and yet they're also trying to uh make humanity the same way I saw another um, little blip that was put out there by somebody that was talking about uh, the decline in sperm counts, the decline in fertility, and, and extending it out and saying by 2045-ish, it's going to be um, an act of magic if somebody can conceive naturally. Well, that's all part of the programming, and this is all part of uh, what we were talking about on on patreon and the fact that you know having the population decline uh, in an extreme manner is part of it because again then it gets redone in another way with a much more uh, compliant uh, population and this is what they've done time and time and time and time again absolutely it it r r <laughs> the the rockefellers you know you have that statement it couldn't be any more clear i don't want a country a nation of thinkers no we only need workers we we don't need geniuses in fact they don't want geniuses and they will bestow you know phds and all these different little egoic um symbols of absorbing their system that will inflate the ego at a large cost and put you in deep debt so you can't go against the system but it really is just a, a matter of you know how well has this human absorbed and parroted that which that human was taught and time and time again the science is rewritten and also the medical science is being rewritten as well so there is a magical um application for hexagrams as there is for pentagrams because the pentagram the five sides is representing uh the elements with spirit above it when you put that single point down then you're elevating the physical over the over the spiritual so you're you're inflating the value of this particular experience and you're putting it higher than the normal way that consciousness flows which consciousness flows from the higher densities down and thus when we do that we end up um, cutting ourselves off from ourselves our higher selves cutting ourselves off from the angelic realm cutting ourselves off from source yes you know this and all that it it symbolizes 
it is it's not about it's never been about an afterlife and again the torah is there to remind a certain group of people who they are and it's all about their position in this life and quote unquote as society would say succeeding in this life what's what are they trying to succeed at well you know wealth uh fame power control it's all about now the here and the now it's it's not about um it's not about an afterlife at all and yet it's been used to control minds the magic of solomon you know and you could break down solomon and you could get soul and moon sun and moon yin and yang and when you look at this you see you know here's a human head and the way that they got their arms out it makes a six-pointed uh, star of david people will call it and the lesser key of solomon uh, another book that was in the uh i think we might still have a copy of this and uh it, it's it's interesting too because when you talk about the origins of dark magic it, it really is coming out of the same tradition that controls the minds of the world and they don't see it they don't see it why why would we have the king king david you know what perhaps the most famous king of all time again an interesting just i'm putting this with charles because i, I want to show the whole concepts it's never changed and it, and it really is again this is a tool for control this is all it is is a tool for control when you look into the goetia and you look into the magic of solomon why, why do they give you sigils sigils are again uh signs and seals to call up demons and you know unabashedly you know label them as demons because this is where everything comes from and the abrahamic tradition is rooted in dark magic it, the darkest forms of magic this is why um, we speak up against it and now you will have people saying too um, it's very important that you know our nation was founded on freedom of religion all right and thus you'll have for public display you know people like anton lavey from back in the day coming out and establishing a church of satan yet when you look at it that church of satan it's its roots go all the way back um to king uh, solomon and king david and before that the roots go back to mars again this is this is the control system that came from mars to earth so you know they want to in a time when they're starting to be revealed and you're going to understand people are going to start moving away so fast from from the darkness that is the control system in place well now they're going to say you know hey you know we have freedom of religion and this is what we follow but it's not even a religion this is just a method and means of control controlling dark demonic entities calling into you know into your circle gray aliens and things far far worse than gray aliens you know it's 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 something that's kind of like an infection of the soul it, it starts to eat the soul away the soul does get weaker while the other entities get stronger um you know this is we we choose to work in the light and even if you are someone of the light, it's it's easy to go down the wrong path because there's so many paths to the darkness that they're claiming to be of the light. I think that's where we do need to be careful and we need to be mindful. At the same time, this is a world, this is a planet that we come here to have our experiences and we should have a deep understanding of everything out there. And it I don't feel it should be kept from the masses. It should all be out there so people can make their informed decisions as as it comes. And and fair too. I mean fair and knowledgeable decisions. But that's not how they play. No. You know, again, look to nature uh because what they're trying to do is is trying to distort, twist and usurp the natural order of things which includes again you know that divine feminine side 
And when I think back to how many people have said um, things like, oh, I, I don't have a divine mother. I only have a divine father in heaven. And what goes through my head is, you know, gosh, what, what, how lost they are. They are so lost. Uh, they, they can't find their way home. They're that lost. Well, they're afraid to. And it is. It all boils down to fear. And this little, this little kitty is, is not afraid. It doesn't matter how intimidating that work looks. She's got it. And this little guy's like, you know, oh, yes, that's wonderful. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Do this. <laughs> do this. I like this. We could be friends if you do this. Yeah, look to nature. Look to the natural order of things. You know, again, People will say, oh, that, what a cult. They were worshiping the sun. That was a sun cult. Well, you know, the sun is, uh, is a relay for source. It is also the way that the light, the information, because light is information and darkness, is a lack of information. You know, when you look at it, of course, the sun is something that you can look at with a feeling of love and reverence and gratitude because we wouldn't be here without it. It is there to bring us and nourish us, bring us information, nourish our souls as well as our physical bodies and every level of us energetically. So again, the system has distorted everything that's natural and given us a very, very unnatural distortion. Activate that heart chakra. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.